rosé in my hand. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to episode one. So, yeah, welcome to the Garlic Girls. Hey, welcome. Welcome, welcome. You've got a <laughs> Mac Whale over here. You got MG over here. <laughs> yeah, is that the new nickname now? <laughs> MG? I mean, it sounds like MC. I kind of like it. Yeah, but M- MG. But I mean, I'm Emily lying. Grace Aikens, just kind of a lot. EMA, <laughs> EGA. EGA. <laughs> For not, sure. not as good as MG. <laughs> not as good as MG. <laughs> so go on, your grievances. You said you wanted to... No, I think we should start with, like, you know, what we're going to talk about today. Because um, I think it kind of ties in well, you know. Okay, that's good. Um, but, so, our topic today, we're talking about... Polygamy and the sanctity of marriage. Is that even the right... Yeah, that's right? the way sanctity. to say it. Yeah. Sanctity. Sanctity like of entity, marriage. But, but sanctity. <laughs> sanctious entity is a sanctity. Oh. So yeah, what are your thoughts on polygamy? What do you would yeah. you do it? Polygamy honestly, growing up, I've always been a huge like fairy tale kind of girl where, you know, like mom, dad, perfect yeah. family, you know, well, coming from a like divorced family and <laughs> yeah, all. Yeah, not perfect uh, family. Exactly. <laughs> like but dreaming of that perfect one and soulmates and what have you like that whole whole spiel but then um i got it i got to college and a college professor completely changed my mind so in college i studied what was it uh legal studies and economics and then there was this one class called the what the fuck was it called the economic the no the legal analysis of economics no the economic analysis of law Okay, okay, got it. <laughs> economic <laughs> analysis, analysis of, of law. law. Yeah, <laughs> economic analysis of law. And this professor, his name, Donald Whitman, I'm going to send him this episode because <laughs> Donald Whitman, you were an awesome professor. You were so cool. You didn't give a flying crap about anything. And you're just a G. And you completely changed my mind on freaking everything. So basically, this... He basically taught me that there's no such thing as morals. There is only numbers in the entire world. There is no such thing as right or wrong. Only what a, like a numerical value of everything. And he was able to persuade me why women should be for polygamy. And essentially the math, the math worked out. This is how the math was calculated. So essentially let's say we have 100 men and 100 women. Out of this 100 men, if we have polygamy, each man is now allowed five wives. Let's just say five wives. And then out of 100 women, now 100 women, you each get one husband, right? Right. So what is 100 divided by five? <laughs> I think that's like 20. 20. Yeah. yeah. So technically, if each man only had five wives, out of the 100 men, only 20 men will be able to procreate. Only 20 men's offspring will exist because... Out of the, all of those people, the women got the creme de la creme of 20 men. And why women should definitely opt for this is let's just say your dream man. Well, who's your dream man, Emily? Man, I don't know. <laughs> just choose anyone. Any, like, movie star or per- you're, you're like, oh, my God, your well, movie crush. Who's your movie star crush? I mean, that's the thing. It's like, whatever I say, that's my... I- idolized version of this person and yeah who no they, could you say any would, say any random just name just say a name yeah. um who do i think is cute i don't know um i mean i used to really like jude law but he's kind of old now that's fine he can be like jude law in his prime right <laughs> yeah, or whoever prime. In there. even like george clooney even now i still would george clooney <laughs> no he's hot i can't remember the last movie i saw him and i was like damn i would he's like 60 something or yeah. i don't even know how old he is Anyway, so back to this. So let's just say, let's just say it's Jude Law, right? Your chances of now marrying Jude Law just, what is it, times five. You have now five times a greater chance of marrying Jude Law than you did before, if polygamy existed. Do you see how that works out? Yeah, okay. But it comes with the the caveat of like having to share a man with somebody, which yeah. I feel like... I I'd rather get one fifth of Jude Law's time than no fifths of Jude Law's time. I would rather get no fifths of no Jude fifths? Law's time. Really? Yeah, I'm a I'm Damn. I am I need I need 100 percent attention. I think that is kind of where I'm that. at. I don't know. And also, like, okay, have you ever you watched that like Sister Wives show, right? No. You've never watched <laughs> never that show? It. Oh my god. Okay, so that's that show on TLC where that's like 
that's the, that's what the whole show is about is like mm. these men that they you know because mm. of I don't know I don't know they just they this is part of their lifestyle whether it be religion or it's just like something yeah, that yeah but what's okay what's so bad with sister wives well, what does sister okay. wives show you I don't know okay I don't remember like who the people were on the show that I like what couple so I can't fully reference who they were but I just remember watching this one episode like a clip of this one episode where um it's like this I don't know I could just tell that it was the the like the husband and wife were together mm. and then they kind of added on this new like new girl to the scenario and she was younger and like prettier well, and th there you go that's exactly why it wouldn't work out i feel like for a polygamous relationship you need like it needs to be from the get-go that everyone understands what they're getting into and the lifelong like what it looks like to have a lifetime of being a sister wife neat like as in this is this is a theoretical hypothetical world other dimension that we're talking about in which people would grow up with polygamy in which like that's just the normal that's just the standard so it's very different from you know like the the what is it called the monogamous relationship as the standard that we have today and like essentially what i learned in that class was why do we have marriage it's actually to protect men and why do we have this like one-to-one -one relationship who were the lawmakers back then? Who were the ones that did the math and did the math and realized, oh shit, if we have polygamy, I'm going to end up with no one. Because only the 20 out of that example earlier, the 100 and 100, only the 20 of the best of the best will end up having a wife in that scenario. And that means 80 men are never going to procreate. Those genes just stopped right there. And it's like, from that perspective, lawmakers chose it's not because oh it's morally right man and one woman and written in the bible whatever it's no this the math does not check out if we have polygamy for men unless it was like both ways both men and women so i don't know just looking from like a pure numbers standpoint it's sometimes hard to be like oh i believe in soulmates i i truly believe that a lot of this stuff is just pitched to us sold to us and like well i know i definitely don't believe in soulmates i think that i believe in soulmates i <laughs> i think that relationships are work and mm -hmm. i think that if you want a relationship to work it's both people putting in the effort it's it's it takes two to tango like and I don't think... But why not three people? It can be three people putting in the effort. Three or four is a people. fucking crowd, bro. Yeah, but it's like, you know four what? people putting was, in the effort. I was just thinking about that. I was like, you know what? I think I would be a little more okay with polygamy if it was there was more than one other woman. I feel like if there's just yeah. one other woman, it just no, it's it like, gets a little... A normal family in this <laughs> hypothetical world would be one man and five women in this hypothetical world we just created. Right. And it's like all wives are treated equally. There is no first wife. There is no second wife. Let's just say in this hypothetical world, you marry your five wives at, at the same time. Yeah. So that's like you collectively married this man at the same time. There Damn, is that no is a complicated wedding. <laughs> yeah. So like I'm saying like, I think a lot of these things are just ingrained in our minds. Even the same thing with like engagement rings, right? Like that's not a thing. It wasn't a thing before. And because we want, we want to just sell diamonds, now it's like, oh, it's a standard when you yeah, get married. Yeah, capitalism. Yeah, but like, <laughs> how does that make any sense? Like, when did we decide that diamond is the rock of love? Like, is it because it's the most expensive? And how do we peddle the most expensive rock the out there? most rare. Yeah, it's not even the most rare, I don't believe, or some shit. I don't even know. I don't even it's know. probably not the most rare. But diamonds is, are pretty. <laughs> they are pretty. They're sparkly. I like diamonds. <laughs> Not to shit on diamonds or anything. <laughs> please, please, keep sending them diamonds, boys. <gasps> but even oh. that is, like, a controversial thing. Although, that's that's one thing. Millennials, like, aren't really buying diamonds as much anymore. Did you hear that? Oh, like not getting diamond married. Well, yeah, we're not getting married as quickly or as early. And different rocks. Yeah. And sapphire. I think it's also kind of like a revolt to that, to the diamond industry in general, where it's, like, oh. the whole blood diamond thing. And also just kind of breaking down like those tradition those traditions basically um <laughs> no I, that's that's just my opinion on but like me i would rather have five times greater of a chance to date the creme de la creme the taken men the the men that are just simply superior the nicest guy out there the guy who's the nicest the smartest the most handsome the richest guy you just have now you have a five times higher chance of being with that guy as opposed to just settling or just ending up with someone cuz 
And that for me does it in the sense where, yeah, I, I don't need to be the one and only if it means that I get to be with the best of the best. Yeah. It's just what I think. Because like truly that man would be a man that can love all of you guys equally. That will give you the love, the support, the comfort, the care that you need. And it's not like a one wife. I'm just saying in an absolute perfect situation, I would much rather opt for that than let's say a perfect marriage to a lesser. Like let's say a lesser, what, what is it called? Like a, not compatible, but like, just like, I don't know. I don't know what it's called. What's the word I'm looking for? Compatible, like, is it something similar to that? Yeah, like compatible or just like a not as... I don't know, a right fit or something. Because like, oh, this guy already got married and he didn't meet you until 10 years into his marriage. But actually, you guys would be a much better fit for each other or something yeah. of that sort. Well, what are your thoughts on... Because I feel like polygamy is always presented as a man with several wives. Mm -hmm. Like, what about a woman with several husbands? I already know the math. I think that... Is that just The math bad? sucks. Yeah, the <laughs> math sucks. In the sense yeah, that... Yeah, well, five men are going to oh. get that one woman pregnant and it's going to take... Uh, <laughs> exactly. Because there's, you only have one baby a year. There's two, like a few reasons why. But that then that's work. also kind of just making marriage just about having kids and like yeah. not really about more than that. No, it can definitely be more than that. It's just now there's the financial burden of five wives on this man. You know what I mean? And I don't even think that that's that bad. Like having the final because like. We talk about Mark Zuckerberg. You think Mark Zuckerberg can't afford to have five wives? Like in this scenario, Mark Zuckerberg has four more wives. In this scenario, Bill Gates has four more. Like y'all could have been Bill Gates' wife, you know, or Mark Zuckerberg's wife. See, that's the thing. I think this kind of relates back to like where it benefits men too. Because it's like, I mean, I don't know. I don't think marriage ever benefits men. <laughs> I think that there is, it's an absolute no benefit to men. Well, I mean, it's married. a contract, like, yeah. where you are basic, you agree mm -hmm. to become one entity. I think it's stupid if you're a man and want to get married. Well, I'm, that's <laughs> why I'm like, why would you want five wives then? And then now you're sharing, now you're making well, it I'm even saying more as, complicated. I'm saying as a man, this is not a good situation. I'm saying as women, we should definitely be pro polygamy. Just because then, think about the shitty guys. The guys that didn't text you back. The guys that, you know, didn't treat you exactly how you deserve to be treated. Those yeah. are some of the ones, those are the lost men. Those are the never going to procreate in this life men. Those are the shitty, like, oh, guess what? You don't text back just like that, boom, done. No girl's going to want to be with you. Those 80 men out of the 100 that we just talked about, the 100 hypothetical men, 80 of them. Done. Gone. So you need to be the night. Like, do you see how this would also curb yeah. behavior? Like, men would have to be on their best behavior to be very financially successful, to be very handsome, to be very smart. Because only the top 20% are going to get a wife. Right. <laughs> like, that's ridiculous if you think about that. Because right now, there is no that there is no pressure. It's a one-to-one -one right now, which I don't think is fair or doesn't benefit women. Anyways, those are just thoughts on I feel like logistically, yeah, that makes sense. Because it's like, it also, I guess, if we're going to go into biology, then it would weed out those shitty men in general from yeah. even existing for future generations. But I feel like when it comes to my emotions, I don't know if I think I'd be able to do it. No, I think when we were raised in a society in which yeah. this is the way, it's not it's the norm. Different. Yeah. yeah. Like, if that were, were the norm, we wouldn't feel that way. We'd be like, wow, having only one wife? Like, how weird. That's, like, too much attention for one person. Or, like... <laughs> yeah, I got shit to do. <laughs> yeah, or, like, you're sitting at a table with just one other person. Like, that would be weird. Where it's like, how is that a family? Just one woman. You know? Yeah. Where it's, like, it, coming from that kind of hypothetical world, it's, it's a little different. But in terms of, yeah, would we like one person to spoil us all the time and everything? Of course that would be amazing. But I'm just thinking, like... It sucks in this world where I see less than awesome men be with amazing women. Yeah. It's like my gripe with this whole thing where it's, yeah. Yeah. No, I definitely understand that. Yeah. You know, I actually, um, I had my own little experience with polygamy uh, the other day. Uh, last night? Yeah. Yeah, I had my own little, uh, my own little experience okay, with polygamy. Okay, I'm excited to hear this. Um, yeah, I ended up going on a date with two different guys. Right? Isn't At that... once? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll explain a little bit. So, um, I've been uh, kind of casually seeing this guy. Um, what should we call him? Who? I don't know who that is. 
Let's call Andrew. Him. I don't know. Let's call him Andrew. Yeah. Do you know any Andrews? Have you slept with any Andrews? <laughs> I know a few Andrews. That's I know. I, I do know one Andrew, but I haven't talked to him in a really long time, so I think it's okay. I'm gonna call him like AJ. No, I also know an AJ, <laughs> so that's it. No, that's not a good one. Uh, Andre. Andre. I, like I don't know. Andre. I don't know an okay. Andre. Okay. So, okay. Andre is so his let's name. call him Andre. Mm-hmm. Um. So all right. I guess I should start also just a little background on Friday night. Um, he invited me over to his friend's place. They had like a hot tub, whatever. Mm. And he invited me over and I was like, okay, cool. Hot tub. I'm down. I'm always down for hot tub. And then, uh, and then like, all right. I don't know how much, how I should say this, I guess. Uh, so then he, he, and he was also talking about earlier in the day about some, Special type of fungus <laughs> that you ingest and uh, like shrooms. Like okay, <laughs> yeah. I just didn't want to come out and say it. <laughs> <That's> fine. <laughs> All right. I guess we're talking about shrooms then. Yeah. So yeah, he had been talking about shrooms, and uh, so I was like, yeah. Oh, is that part of the equation? And he was like, yeah. And then, and he invited me over, and then he. So then I was like, okay, cool. Like, where is this place? And then he didn't respond for a little bit, and then once he did respond, um. He was like, oh, you know, it's just me and the guys right now, like, blah, 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 like, uh, and what else did he say? He was like, you know, maybe you should come by another time. And I was like, okay, whatever. So then the next day he calls me. Wait, I thought you saw him on Friday night. No, I was going to see him on Friday night. You saw him on Thursday night. I saw him on Saturday night. So yesterday. Wait, no, you saw him during the week sometime. I I did see him. Yeah, I saw him some other time this week, but that was... I think that was Wednesday or Thursday or whatever. Uh-huh. But anyway, so then... Because, yeah, you, on Wednesday, I think Thursday or whatever, the day after you saw him, you came in with glowing uh-huh. reviews. And in that moment, I was like, I'm done with this guy. I don't want to hear it anymore about him. Yeah. And I knew he was a bad... Like, this is what I'm talking about in terms of gut feelings. When you have a gut feeling, trust it. Like, my gut feeling immediately was like, I don't know this kid. I don't want to know more about him. <laughs> but continue. All right, so... So Friday night, you didn't go over. You know okay, what, we're Saturday, Saturday now. That's yeah. what we're on. So now, yeah. So I just want to set the scene of him. Just remember, he said, like, oh, like, you know, it's just me and, like, I don't know, it's just a bunch of guys over here, like, kind of, like, selling it, like, you know, like, I don't, I don't know if you really have a good time or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then the next day he calls me, and he, you know, I was like, what are you up to today? And, um, like, was trying to make some plans, and I'm like, okay, cool. And then I, like, so I sent him this hike. Uh, that I've been wanting to go on because it's there's like this... when the fuck did you start hiking? What is, uh, no, don't no, even no. pretend that you no, hike. I, can you let me finish? Let me finish my thought. All right, you're pretending to hike. No, go no, no, on. no, no. Let me finish my thought. Okay, I saw because it will make sense. It's not a difficult hike. It just is a nice view and it has a swing. Okay, makes and, sense. Uh, it, uh, Instagram hike. Okay, Instagram hike. <laughs> Quote unquote hike. Gotcha. Instagram hike. Yes. Gotcha. So. So I sent him this thing because I was like, yeah, I want to take pictures at this cool swing. Like, this is a dope spot. I had seen it on Instagram. I was like, okay, cool. Right, cut to the chase. What's yeah. happening? So then, so he's like, okay, yeah, cool. Like, I'll hit you up when I'm heading back over in my house. So then I, so then I'm, you know, doing my thing, whatever, getting shit done. Mm-hmm. And then he, all right, here's a, <laughs> you're going to love this. Here's red flag number one. Just, just. Just what do you mean number one? It's like okay, red no, flag like 15, <laughs> all right? All right. We've been like 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 just, uh, batting red flags left and right. All right, what's the next red flag? Just 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 bear with me, okay? <laughs> just bear with me. It's all for the content, okay? What's, what's the next red flag? No, this is not for the content. It's for the this content. This is not for the content. It's for the content. Um So then, um he texts me and he's like, "I'm hella horny right now." Can you, like, why don't you come over and then we'll, like, figure out this hike afterwards? And I'm like, God damn. And I was like, you know what? Okay, well, I wouldn't mind having some sex right now anyway, so cool. So then I go over there. I don't, I did not see that as red flag. Okay, no, it, no, 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 it will be more of a red flag. Okay. No, 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 it will, it will, it'll yeah, make okay. a little more that sense. That text in itself, not really a red tag. No, 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 but. Like, it's not a red flag considering how long you guys have seen each other for. Like, as in, if this was the second time or third time you're no, having no, no, sex, No, 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 I know weird. that. That's, yeah. And that's part of why I was, like, okay, kind of okay yeah. with it. Yeah. I was kind of like, all right, you know, like, cool. All right, mm-hmm. that's cool with me. Um, so then, yeah, I went over there. 
-hmm. And yeah, we had sex. Cool. And then right after, he's like, um, oh shit, like I forgot I'm supposed to like go play soccer with my friends. And I was like, uh, and I said this to him. I was like, uh, are you about to like pump and dump right now? Mm -hmm. Um, and he was like, kind of like realized like, oh shit. And I'm like, yeah, that's, I, I thought we were supposed to go hiking after this. I thought that was the plan. Mm. So then he's like, okay, yeah, you're right. And like, and then he like calls, I like, he calls whatever his friend about soccer. And he's like, yeah, I'm hanging out with like this girl. I'm seeing Emily, like whatever. And I'm like, okay, cool. And then, so then this hike turns into him. Wait, all- green flag that the fact that he canceled soccer and went with Yeah, no, I-, I know. I know. I know. That's why I was like, okay, okay, mm. cool. But then this plan turns into um, another couple coming along, which I'm like, okay, a double date. All right. You know, that's okay. But then that couple can't make it. So then it turns into his roommate coming along with us. Just one of his roommates coming along with us. Okay. D- does him and his roommate have sex for fun, casually? <laughs> Is that the, the, the Do, end of the story? No, no, no. <laughs> no. I mean, actually, I don't know. I don't think so. But um, <laughs> keep going. But then so, yeah. So I am just like, I feel like I didn't really like process. I was kind of like, okay, cool. Like, because I feel like in that moment, I was just like, I don't know. It just, it just felt weird because I was like, okay, this is something I would like plan to go do and then now we're waiting for this other person to come why did he have to bring that other person exactly so then we go out like and I feel like I didn't it didn't really fully hit me like I didn't fully process like I'm not okay with this until we were like kind of more on the date and then it just felt like it felt like I was on a date with them Mm. you know what I mean like they were talking the whole time they were the ones like talking about whatever other shit that they did and it just kind of turned into like wow okay you know, maybe I should have just gone home. Maybe I should have just let this be a pump and dump. Like, I don't know. Because, so we ended up, yeah, we went on the little hike. And it's, this is no shade to, like, his roommate. Like, he was a nice guy. Whatever. That's not the problem here. It's just the fact that it just didn't really feel like it was a date. It felt like I was hanging out with them. Like, I was the third wheel. And I feel like this kind of all came to a head or whatever, like, when... So we went on this little hike and then we went to like a restaurant afterwards. We got some food and I was already like, I feel like before I'd like smoked some weed. So I was kind of like, I didn't really like care at the moment. I was kind of like a little bummed out. I was a little like pissed off about this situation, but I was like, just didn't, it didn't really like hit until we were at the restaurant and all of us, like we ate the food. It was really good. We all went to the, like, we all went to go to the bathroom and uh, like we all went at the same time. Right. So then when I'm walking out, like, I'm kind of like, I don't know, I don't know if he's still in there. And I was like, he's not going to wait for me, is he? He's not going to, like, wait for me at the bathroom, right? He's going to probably, like, be already with his fucking friend. And sure enough, yeah, I'm like, I'm waiting there for, like, a second. I'm like, is he going to come out? Or did he, where did he, where is he? And then, yeah, I, like, kind of, like, look over a little bit. And then I see, yeah, they're, like, going over and, like, just talking over by, like, this like wall art or whatever like talking about shit and it was just kind of like I don't know it just made me feel like why am I even here and it's funny because even the roommate at the end of the date was like oh well thank you for thanks for the date like I hope I was a good third wheel like at least he was (laughs) self-aware of the situation but it was just kind of one of those things where it's like do you why why am I here do you even want to spend time with me like what like do you even want to get to know who I am like Mm -hmm. If not, then maybe I should have just left after sex. Because if that's all that this is, then that should be all that this is. I feel like it was just a weird scenario okay. to then have this, like, this polygamous date. <laughs> I honestly, honestly, I don't say this lightly. I think you're overreacting with this. Because, like, in this particular situation, I don't see that anything went wrong at all. Like, as in, I thought there was some weird shit going on between him and, his, him and his friend. Like, you caught them kissing or this or that. Like, no, you made it, like, you framed it in such a way that I was waiting for, all right, he's having sex with other men. No. Like, from, like, the hot tub to this, yeah. Like, you, you kind of, like, like, set it up where I was, I was kind of thinking that he was going to be, you know, having sex with men or something. No, I 100% think that in this particular situation, it wasn't, like, you already know, I'm not Team Andre. 
But as in, for this particular situation, I don't see it as like a, okay, fuck Andre. We shouldn't talk. Like, as in, no, he already lost the, the voting for Andre thing a long time ago. But in this particular situation, I think it's one of those where you could have absolutely, absolutely said to him at the start, like, yo, I don't want your friend. I want it to just be us. And then you could have stopped it and like nipped it at the bud as soon as he brought up that he was going to call his friend. And it should have, like, just like how you said the pump and dump thing, the next thing that you should have said is just like, bro, why do you have to invite someone? Why can't it just be us? And that should have been when you questioned that. I think it was just like, it was one of those things where I already felt weird because mm-hmm. it felt like I was already, like, it already felt, it, I feel like the situation just felt weird from me even, like, being like, okay, you called me over to hang out and then now you're like, now you have other plans. Mm-hmm. No, it was just super mild. Like, that's what I'm saying. From the get-go with Andre, he just seems like a bit of a loser. (laughs) If I'm being completely honest. You know what I mean? At first, I was like, all right, let's give him a chance. And then that weird video that he sent you. Go on. Describe describe to the public what what this video was. I feel like as soon as I saw that, I was just like, fuck, you gave me the ick. And I don't want anything to do with you ever. Like, ever. Like, do not... Like, the fact that we breathe the same air that is created by this Earth, the fact that we walk the same Earth and call this planet home is ridiculous to me. That's what I thought. That's when that's when Andre lost me. <laughs> yeah, the video was him eating a piece of fruit seductively, if anybody wants to... If anybody's wondering. Seductively, in air quotes. Yeah, quote-unquote seductively. <laughs> it was not seductive. It was gross. And it just, like... Like you said. Like you said. If a guy, what is it? What did you talk about? If a guy fronts how good he is at giving head, <laughs> he's not good at giving head. It's as simple as that. Yeah, I mean, or he just straight up doesn't do it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, be done with Andre. I was really excited when you said that you went on a date with two guys. I thought that you met somebody new. That's why I was excited to hear this story because I thought it was someone new. I thought we were done with Andre. Freaking like years ago, you know no, what I mean? No, this is like, just a tale of my own stupidity, basically. Yeah, like walk away. I didn't. I didn't. I. I should have prefaced this with, yeah, like this was. I was. This was a stupid thing, <laughs> but. Well, also, I just think like some guys don't a don't know how to treat a woman. B, we are way too good for them, and it's like we should never be just settling or just okay with the situation where it's like, all right, this is good enough. I think the reason why, and I think also, yeah, the reason why it bothered me is like, I don't know. It's just the fact that he felt that he needed like a buffer, like a safety blanket to just spend time with me. I think that is ultimately what bothered me. And I, I didn't, like I said, I, or I didn't say this, but I didn't freak out at him. I feel like I went through all of this kind of in my head because I was just like, I don't even really want to waste the breath on it. Until I'm recording. <laughs> but it was just, it was one of those things where I was like, I just, it just, it just felt shitty, basically. It just felt yeah. shitty. And it's like, why did you let him even make you feel that way in the first place? You should have pulled the plug on this weeks ago, ages ago. Like, as in, there's so many reasons why I wouldn't even call them red flags, but just like blatant statements or something like you know what I mean where it's not even like a I don't know I don't know I'm super over him like as in there's too many guys that just don't really know like guys out there whoever whichever guy is listening men you men out there if you think you found the one or if you think you found a good girl freaking let her know that treat her that way and don't bring your friend on a date with you yeah never bring your friend on a date with you (laughs) just don't do it yeah because like because the thing is I I'm a social person. I like hanging out with groups of people. That's not, like, a problem. But the fact is, when you can't separate, like, your time with the person that you quote-unquote care about or, like, not even whatever, the per- like, the girl you're just seeing, whatever, if you can't separate that from the time that you spend with your friends, if there can't be any difference or separation between those two, then it's like, what's the point, you know? Like, why... <laughs> I don't know, he just gave me boy vibes. At no point did this guy give give me, like, man vibes. And honestly, I feel like we're too old to be fucking around with boys these days. Like, yeah, it's got, like, men. Date men, not boys. Andre was a boy that I could see from, like, day one. Oh, we'll, we'll bleep that. <laughs> but yeah, like, I could tell that he was a boy from day one. So I'm pretty, like... So I'm pretty over the situation. I hope that you've learned your lesson. It's just like, 
over it. Hashtag over it. Yeah, I think this kind of was a nail in the coffin. Well, that's just fucking the coffin should have been nailed fucking like this is i think this is the last bit of dirt All right, like is, you <laughs> waited to like bury the damn fool and you're still like patting the dirt on there or some shit but yeah like i i, I just think finally i've came i've come i've came i've come to the realization that the most valuable thing my most valuable possession in this world is actually my time so what i choose to spend my time on is very important and like giving your time to like and this is why recently i've started to get really aggravated when people ask me to hang out when people ask me to like go on a date or go do something with them especially when it's it just it, it aggravates me in the sense like how dare you not value my time like i do how dare you just casually like oh yeah you want to hang out don't fucking ask me hey you want to hang out no <laughs> like no you better have like a five course fucking meal planned or like an activity we're gonna go hiking we're gonna do scrapbooking we're gonna like see and that's why i was like kind of okay with or at first i was like oh okay we're gonna go do something okay this is you know like no it's in like you got lured in and uh, yeah i, I like, felt lured in i felt like i was like in it and then it's like oh actually but my friend is coming along too and then the fact that he also was like oh i actually have soccer you shouldn't have asked him to cancel that he should have been like oh shit i have soccer well, I didn't... let me cancel that yeah exactly no it's just that and then and that i think that was part of the reason why i didn't say anything about like his friend coming along because i was like okay well you're clearly like okay with this like this is something you I want. Just this is something out. you want. Honestly, at that moment when he's like, "I'm gonna," I would have just been like, "I'm, I'm fucking done." Like you go figure your shit out. Because if you cannot realize what a fucking gem I am, you're either dumb or just blind. It's one of those two. Like, Honestly, I was just like, I want the the IG pics, and they did turn out pretty cute. So I'm like, I don't regret that part. I got something out of it at least. I'm glad you got something out of it. <laughs> I just like like time wasters, you know, like. So recently, I'm having to break off this thing with this guy. I still haven't done it yet. I'm a, I'm a pussy. I'm a wimp. I'm not, not, a, not a wimp, but like. Yeah, you, you get an, are you talking all this shit to me about how I'm. No, a, no, no. Like, how, I've refused <laughs> to hang out with them. The reason why I'm talking all this shit to you, this guy has been begging to hang out with me since last week. The texts, the calls, the texts, the calls. And it's like, it's come to a point where it's like, holy shit, I need to let this guy know that. I don't want to waste his time either. I value him as a person like, hey, I don't want to waste your time. I don't want you to waste mine. You're not the one for me. And I don't want to explore this. I already know that you're not the one for me. So why bother doing this? You know, it's a waste of both our times. And if you don't understand why you're not the one for me, I can break that down for you as well. Like, it's going to be a, like, fuck it. I'm just going to actually just call him. Call him live. Like, you know, like, with this, it's, it's because... He could have won me over. He could have easily swept me off of my feet. The fact that we went on a date together. And I was like kind of being like swung in that direction where I was like, okay, maybe I can explore this. Explore this a little bit. And then the thing for me that did it was he missed Valentine's Day. Sure, he was on a trip with like his friends, whatever. That was already planned, whatever. Did he text you or anything? No text. Yeah. Yeah, that was already, I'm like, yeah. you have moved from possibly boyfriend material to okay you can be a part of the rotation now yeah and then from like rotation i'm just like i'm not even that attracted to this guy i'm yeah. sorry you're not a 10 out of 10 fucking like i know once you honestly once you get dropped down from that pedestal it's kind of like hard to even yeah you go from boyfriend to freaking rotation and if you can't even make the cut for rotation that's just when you got yeah it. just cut them off you yeah. know and that, that's what we've come to where it, he could have swooped me off my feet. I gave him the chance. I gave him the time. At first, I was responding to his messages. I was answering his phone calls. Bro, the fact that I will pick up your phone call or respond to a text to you means you better fucking give it your all when I'm doing that. Not after. Not when I'm, I'm done giving time to you. No. Like, it's, it's that moment. You got to strike when the iron's hot. That's it. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? And the fact that the fact that he showed nothing, like, sure, now he's asking me, like, oh, he's planning all of these things. Like, oh, do you want to go trapezing, trapezing, whatever the fuck that is. Like, the, the jumping thing, I know oh, what yeah. it is. I know what it is. But is it, like, it was, like, that idea. Or do you want to, like, get really high and go to the wisdom or this or that? Like, those are really fantastic ideas. Thank you for pitching them. You are, like, two weeks too late. Yeah. And that's it. Like, as in, I'm sure you're a fantastic guy, whatever, but... 
You did not realize as soon as you met me that I am fucking perfection and that you want to <laughs> give everything up in life for me. Well, it's just like, I feel like, yeah, the the first co- like week or two of like talking to somebody, I feel like is critical and just like, it's first impressions. I mean, that's just with anything. That's with anyone you meet. You got to make a good first impression. And if you don't really make a strong first impression, it's hard to come back from that. I agree. Like, first impression wasn't fantastic with this person. It was more just like a... Ugh. It's me burping. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, that's... That's <laughs> that's my piece on fucking time wasters. I don't have time for it anymore. But, I, yeah, I mean... So, I guess where... I guess where this leads us is, like, what are we actually looking for? Like, what... I'm looking for the one. What makes up the one? Honestly, what makes up the one, there actually isn't a checklist. So Harold, let's talk about Harold. (laughs) Harold is a guy that recently made me realize there's no such thing as a checklist. He doesn't check any of my boxes. (laughs) Literally none of my boxes, except for maybe one. So let's just say that let's just say this checklist is like 10, 10 items, right? This guy freaking probably hits one of. So what are the ten items, like hypothetically? <laughs> hypothetically, well, obviously, like every girl grows up, I hope the guy is taller than me. I right. hope the guy, you know, is very handsome. I hope the guy is very well endowed. <laughs> I hope the guy is, you know, like smarter than me. I hope that he has like financial freedom or financial security. I hope that, you know, he's ambitious. I hope that he, he, what, cares about family, loves children, those kind of things. Like, wants to have children. Those are very important to me. Sense of humor is super important. Sense of humor. Sense of humor is, like, so important. Well, I would even say, like, sense of humor, goofiness. Okay, so that's, I think, ten items. So we've hit our checklist of ten. Yeah. That would, I would say, is my checklist of ten, and he probably hits two of them. So, like, (laughs) I think it's a 20%. Yeah, a 20% is an automatic fail. But somehow this kid is, I'm going to say kid. Yeah, this kid, this boy has won my heart. And I am sitting here absolutely perplexed as to why. And let's talk about the boxes that he did check then in this scenario. The boxes that he checked was ambitious, smart, financial security. Those are three. So let's give him 30%. Yeah. Like with 30%. It's still a fail. (laughs) Yeah, I fell in love with his mind. Yeah. Let's just say that. Is in conversation, what he's thinking, his next steps. That's what I fell in love and with. And I feel like that kind of shows like it's, it isn't just a cut and dry checklist. There's nuances. There's yeah. so much that goes into being attracted to somebody yeah. and wanting to have something with them. What is that term? I'm a sapiosexual. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. attracted to intelligence. No, 100%. As in, I think that I, that's what made me learn. I need to, like, this is my new standard in terms of dating someone. It's more that, or finding a partner, not dating someone, finding a partner. For my partner, back to your question of what what am I ultimately looking for? What I'm ultimately looking for, what I'm looking for in a partner is you and me together. If tomorrow we woke up with nothing, not even the clothes on our back, we have absolutely nothing. You and me naked in the woods or some shit. Or not even in the woods, in the Adam city, and wherever. Adam Eve style. Yeah, Adam and Eve style. <laughs> well, you and I make it. Yeah. That's that. We have nothing. Absolutely nothing. Will your sense of humor, your ambition, my sense of humor, my ambition, my needs, my wants, then pull us out of nothingness? Can we build an empire together? That's my ultimate test for any given guy. Tomorrow we wake up, we have nothing. Then what? And I feel like with, with that test... A lot of guys don't even pass like the, I'd probably shoot you within the first five minutes or I would eat you <laughs> because eat you, yeah. yeah, like you're, you provide nothing except for maybe sustenance. Except for meat. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like some people, it's like, all right, you can satisfy maybe one or two desires, two desires, the sexual desire and like my hungry desire or whatever the fuck that is. Yeah. You know I mean? That's my, that's my test now. It's if him and I woke up with nothing tomorrow, would we be okay? Yeah. I think also just like. Somebody that is there for you when it's when things aren't perfect 
And I mean, that kind of goes into that as well. That's like very. That's simple. what I'm saying. This is the ultimate test, yeah. Emily. I found the ultimate <laughs> test. The test whether or not the guy has a sense of humor. Like, if you were trapped with this guy and this guy only for the rest of forever and you have nothing, can you deal with that? <laughs> yeah. Like, if he doesn't have a sense of humor, clearly no. You know, do you like his personality? That's a big personality test. It's only you and him for the rest of forever and you have nothing. It's you and him and his roommate for the rest of forever. <laughs> well, that, no thank you. That is like a terrible. Uh. This episode is brought to you by NanoCare. NanoCare is a period product. <laughs> It's a pad, and it has technology within it that uh, helps relieve cramps, which is pretty cool. So it's more than just a pad. It's Nano Pad, the most innovative sanitary pad developed to naturally relieve menstrual discomfort. Pretty cool, right? Like, I hate cramps. Do you get re- cramps? Sometimes, yeah. And honestly, yeah, when I used that shit, I was like, this actually kind of, it works. Like, like infrared technology. Some stuff that we don't understand. I don't know. It's like infrared on your pussy. Like, I don't know what, I don't know what it is. I'm not a scientist. We've established that in the trailer. We're not scientists, but. Well, I would almost be a physician. <laughs> <laughs> what do you oh, mean wait, huh? Sorry, not a physician, a <laughs> physicist. Those are two very different things. Very different scientists, physicians, and physicists. <laughs> But it's a common uh, uh, confusion. Of but course, no, of nano nano care nano pads. Is Go it, check it out. Go check it out. It's www nano is spelled n a n n o c a r e dot com. That is n a n n o c a r e dot com. Dot com. There we go. <laughs> Some, some, some symbols. <laughs> All right. We're our own music. So now that we're back from the commercial break, <laughs> we're going to talk about the sanctity of marriage. Ugh. The next, the next big, big section of this. Oh God. Where do we even start? <laughs> do you do you believe in the sanctity of marriage? What does I that do. even mean? I do. What does that even mean to you? Like, what is what is the sanctity of marriage? I always say I'm going to have four husbands. Um, oh, so you are going to do the polygamy thing. No, as in not at the <laughs> oh, same time. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's going to be spread out polygamy. <laughs> no, therefore it's not. I'm going to be in. Then it's not polygamy. I'm a serial monogamist, all right? Like, I get it. I, so am I. I just haven't found another person to serial yet. Okay. Or is that the right word? I don't know. No. <laughs> to to monogamize. To, to monogamize yet. I haven't found the next person to monogamize yet. But you yet. can polygamize some people. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, back to marriage. I believe in it. I think that... Uh, I, I love how this is coming after our first section of the podcast where we kind of discussed polygamy. So this is lifelong monogamy. Or the sanctity of marriage. Yeah, the complete opposite. <laughs> Define marriage, saying. Emily. I mean, it's basically a legal contract. I mean... But what does this legal contract entail? I mean, it entails that you are you become one entity almost. Pretty much. Not almost. You are like one entity on paper. In the eyes I of mean, the law? Yeah, yeah, when you file taxes, you are... A, you, you are one! <laughs> yeah, I mean, people... There are some people that are married and they don't file jointly. Um... But why? The only reason right now to get married is for tax benefits. Yeah, but I'm pretty That's sure. What I heard. It, I'm pretty <laughs> sure it. I, I think it depends on each person's. I, again, we, I am not a tax advisor or a scientist, so <laughs> do not follow our tax <laughs> advice. <laughs> but so, do, so again, take everything we say with a grain of salt, well, with a whole salt shaker of salt. Um, but no, I I know that. Yeah, there. I, I'm pretty sure it, there are tax benefits for filing jointly and it being counted as one income like both incomes being considered one income i don't know i don't know i don't think that's how it works i don't but they (laughs) but you share assets like if you no no no. i I like where you started that two entities are becoming one no it's a marriage it's a marriage of like when you say there's a marriage of two things you know yeah i mean that's literally what yeah yeah. what that word means it's just two entities becoming one two becoming one I, i really like that even just like beyond a legal perspective beyond a very 
a literal perspective. I even like it as like, what, what is it? Like an abstract way of thinking. Two becoming one. I mean, yeah, that is, yeah. you could say like, oh, you marry these two things together. Like that, it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't always necessarily need to be no, like I love that. Marriage. I love that definition so much that now I want to get married. Like, <laughs> right now. Right now. <laughs> right now. Cause, cause All right. Like, where's the, where's the priest? <laughs> Let's the reason <laughs> why I like that so much is because now that kind of explains the other half. We're becoming one because we're just two halves. Now I'm looking for my other half. I am. That's what I want. So when you ask about the sanctity of marriage, yeah, I believe my other half is out there. And once we join together, we're unstoppable. I'm looking for my partner. I mean, yeah. And that's why that, that's why vows, like exchanging vows, part of, part of the traditional vows are like in sickness and in health, for good or bad, in rich and poor. I mean, that's basically, it's a contract you're agreeing to. You're agreeing to the terms and conditions of this contract. So are you going to be with me through the shit? Mm. And I mean, 50% of people don't. <laughs> um, we're both part of, <laughs> our, our parents are both part of that 50%. So how has divorce affected you? Ugh. God, that could be a whole other... <laughs> that could be an episode in and of itself. That could be a whole episode <laughs> in and of itself. Um. <laughs> but when I was eight... My mom introduced me to a guy, a guy that I thought looked like a vampire. <laughs> no joke. I thought he looked like a vampire. I was a little bit scared, but in the end, she married this guy, and that was my stepfather. And let's fast forward. Fuck. Uh, I was eight when they got married. What, I'm 25 now. How, how many years is that? 17 years? Mm -hmm. Fast forward 17 years, now they're getting divorced. So, so now they are. Now they are. This, oh, so this is a current day they are This is now. like six months ago the news was broke oh, to me. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. So going through divorce the first time, I just feel like they made a rush decision. That's what I think. I think that the sanctity of marriage was not destroyed. I think that it was two people that entered into agreement without knowing what it fully entailed. Yeah. That's it. And it's like, I feel like many times we sign contracts without knowing what it fully entails. Yeah. You know? <laughs> no, I mean, and that also, I, I'm thinking back even to like, so my mom was married before that, before she married my dad. And that's why yeah, she you're a my... DD child too. Well, yeah, actually, no, you weren't around yet. I wasn't around, around for yet. the first one. I was, I'm, I was the baby, so I wasn't around for the first one. But she... But your, your siblings are. Yeah, they were around for both of them. They're yeah. DD. <laughs> double divorce. They're, yeah, they're double divorce. Double divorce. Divorce. Oh, that's, that should be a thing. <laughs> Continue. Double divorce. <laughs> um, so they, so I think that's also sh the reason they got divorced too is because people were getting married so young then. And that was, and also. Wait, how old were your parents when they got married? Well, my, well, when my mom and dad got married, they were already both in their forties. My, my mom oh, is a year, shit. is a year older than my dad. And she was. Well, actually, no. They must have been in their late thirties. I'm assuming. I don't know how long they were married. I would have to check. How, how old is your mom right now? Sixty-eight minus your age, twenty-seven. It was probably around when they got married, right? Well, yes. Yeah, so I, that's what I'm trying to figure out is how long they were. I don't think they were married that long. So probably like me. thirty-eight to forty-one. Yeah, they were in late late thirties. Yeah. Late thirties when they got married. Um, but she had married her previous husband, my my brother and sister's dad. Uh, when she was 21. I mean, they, and that, and that was also because of religion too. They were in the same church and that was like the whole, like waiting until marriage thing. And I feel like that was also a, such a different time where people were, a lot more people were doing that also like waiting until marriage. And also once religion comes into play of that too, having mm -hmm. that influence is people were getting married a lot younger and yeah. And it's, I feel like, I didn't know shit when I was 21. I can't imagine that. I can't imagine getting married when I was 21. Okay, Loki, I was ready to pledge my life to my high school boyfriend at the age of 16. <laughs> See, that's the thing. It's like, oh. I, I, if I was going to do it, I, I should have just done it then. But I well, think I was just... <laughs> you know, sometimes, Loki, I actually look back to that. Shout out to my high school boyfriend. I probably still love you, and we probably would have, like... <laughs> I, I still love him to be honest we had some great memories together but I, I am still in love with what I had I know that I'm not in love with his current self he's probably not in love with my current self yeah it's just that moment in time yeah. right yeah, I see yeah. It. we almost ran away to Cambodia together we were yeah. literally in Cambodia I looked at him and I was like let's just not go back let's just yeah. do this forever <laughs> and we were we I'm not kidding you we were so close to just 
running away. We were going to open a bar. We are going to buy a little plot of land. But then I Googled and I searched that you cannot own land in Cambodia unless you're a resident or, sorry, a citizen. <laughs> so then I was like, all right, let's just not do this. <laughs> yeah. That was the reason why. But no. Can you not? You really can't? Like, can you own? Apparently not. Is that just a co- Cambodia specific thing? Yeah. Like, like right? it's country specific. So even in China, did you know that in China, you don't actually ever own anything? You have a 99 year lease. On any given item you don't yeah. actually own quote unquote what you own that's crazy wait okay wait say that again you don't own what you own in china you, when you buy a house you do not own that property so like it's not a mortgage you, it's no, like it, a is le- a it is a lease it is a mortgage but it's like a 99 year lease so it's just basically a lifespan. Yeah. A lifespan lease. It's a lifespan lease, is basically. <laughs> Instead of a one-year, kind of. it's a, not a one-year lease, it's a 99-year lease. But you're given the impression that you own it or whatever. So basically, See, no. but that's such a big difference, though, because I feel like here it's so about, like, you, you inherit, yeah, you inherit your property, you inherit, like, there's, there's so much that goes into that here, like, is, yeah. and that's why people are like, oh, I want to leave this to my child, like, it's such a, like, big thing. That's how trust funds have become a thing. Yeah. All of these things. Yeah. yeah. In China, that's not a thing. Due to the nature of our government, it's just you own something for a given amount of time and it's not yours. Nothing is yours. Damn. You have nothing. That's rough. <laughs> that's what the government's trying to teach you. At the end of the day, you have nothing, which yeah. is a good lesson to learn. <laughs> well, I feel like, yeah, Ameri- American like culture is so built on like individualism mm. also. It's, it, I mean, it's individualism also in, like, ex- in your family. Like, yeah. whatever yeah, that is. Yeah, 100%. That's it. 100%. Like, that's it. Other than that, it doesn't really matter. I agree with that fully. But back to the sanctity of marriage. So what is our vote on So that? what is our vote? What do we think? Like, is there sanctity in marriage at all? I think that there is sanctity in marriage, but it's... The sanctity of marriage is entirely up to the two people that enter it. Yeah. That's completely. it. Completely. And it's a continuous effort. It's yeah. not something you agree on once and then you're like... Oh, well, I'm not really feeling it today. And I mean, there will be days, I think, where both people will kind of like, where there's going to be, I think my mom said something about this too, where she was like, as long as you have, what was it? If you have like a B minus or like C effort, that is enough to keep you through a relationship. Because there's some days where this person's going to be at a D and this person's going to be at an A. And then there's other days where it'll like, where you'll both be at a B. As long as you can maintain that C average in your relationship and like you can maintain it and you don't both go below that that's how you can keep it strong because there's going to be days where it and it'll flip the next person the next day it'll be the other person is at an a and the other person is at an f and is if you can work through it together and keep going that is ultimately what what will keep the marriage strong or keep it and also, I just think communication in general is a really big thing. Mm-hmm. No, absolutely. All, all of those are things. I agree with the working towards something. My mom always jokes, well, it, it's, it's becoming more and more of a reality these days. But guys, instead of asking to date me, they ask to get into business with me. My mom says this. She's like, with you, if I get into business with you and you're passionate about this business and this business is thriving... I know that I have you for life. That you and we are going to be together for life because the business is thriving. <laughs> and essentially that that will keep me to stick around. But I think that's also like running a business is similar to running a relationship. You yeah. Know? Like you've got to care. That's yeah. It. I mean, they're both legal contracts. They yeah. are both something you're agreeing to. Mm-hmm. You're signing on a dotted line for. Yeah. You so. You have to be willing to do the work. Because yeah. In business and relationships and life, you have to be willing to do the work doesn't necessarily mean that there's going to be a lot of work, but you have to be willing to do it. Willing to do it, yeah. Mm -hmm. And if both people are willing to do it, then that is what will keep it going. Yeah. That's that's why I'm saying it's so important to find a person, to, to, to kind of tie this all up. Back to what I was saying earlier, where it's so important to find a person that if you two wake up the next day and have absolutely nothing, you'll be okay. Whether it's, you'll, you'll find peace in each other's humor. Or whether you guys can build something out of nothing. Or it's, you know, we're just going to throw sticks at each other for the rest of the yeah. You know, and that, that keeps us going. Like, who, who knows? But you and your partner, 
you wake up tomorrow. I, I'm asking this to all the listeners at home. You and your partner, you wake up tomorrow, you guys have nothing. Nothing at all. Not even the clothes on your back. Where do you go from there? Do you guys still have a relationship? Also, disclaimer, I'm sorry for all the marriages that I just like broke up and also all the relationships <laughs> that just ended because of that line right there. I would like you guys to know that there's something better out there Do you there immediately you. just start having sex because you both don't have clothes on? <laughs> that might be a thing too. Like lust can low-key carry you through all that. But then what do you do after? For the rest of forever. If you're ready to have sex if with you- your partner for the rest of forever, that... I'm saying I mean, that, like, yeah, that, that's ultimately it. No, it's you know? a good test though. So let's just say all you have is attraction, physical attraction with the other. If you are willing to, because of this physical attraction, you believe that this physical attraction can carry the two of you for the rest of forever, you'll be fine. The next day when both of you wake up with nothing. But I think both of you need to be on the same page yeah. about that. Because no, 100%. if not, then yeah, then it's, it, it, no, both of you need walk. to be, yeah, exactly. If both of you are not on the same page of being mutually so physically attracted to each other, mm-hmm. Because I feel like physical attraction is such a, like, wavering thing that can be tested anyway. But I like to put physical attra- attraction actually pretty down low on the total, totem pole, totem, totem pole, <laughs> totem toll, totem total pole, total, 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 totem pole of relationships. I like to put that at the very bottom because I also like to pose the question, if I got into a horrific car accident tomorrow... Yeah, like burn, burn yeah. victim. Like, can't walk. Yeah, can't walk. You're paraplegic. Maybe I can't talk. I no longer look like what I looked like yesterday. Well, yeah. you still be there. Do you? Uh, yeah. Do Simple you still that. care about me? Yeah. Like same as thing a with person. your your significant other. Not only yourself, but your significant other. Yeah. If they got into a car crash, badly burned, they no longer can speak. They no longer can even understand you. They no longer look like what they used to. And that's why a lot, I mean, that, that also leads to a lot of divorce too, is illness. That's a really big cause, whether it's the partner getting an illness or like their child getting an illness, Mm. that can cause such a strain on a relationship that it does lead to divorce sometimes. No, it's difficult. All these things are difficult things. And I think it's very hard to weed out someone and find, are you, that's why, that's, that's why I keep going back to this question. If the two of you woke up tomorrow with nothing, would you be able to make it? Because I think that that's the ultimate test of all, where we're stripping away everything. We're stripping away your background, your class, your economic status, your education. Now, where do, where do you like, if you were stripped, but you guys had kids together, where does that fit into Well, it? sure. You and me, kids, we're out in the fucking wild. Are you going to be the type that wants to grill our children and eat them? Like, I'm serious. There are actually men are gonna out there like that. Are going to put them on a skewer? Yeah. There's some people who are like, fuck our kids. Let's eat them first. <laughs> You know, like, I think that this is a great young experiment. Meat. Yeah, young meat. Like, but at the end of the day, I think that that is the ultimate test. And until I find a person that I would be okay with, if we were in the middle of nowhere, ended up with nothing but ourselves, and I can carry on with them, that's my person. Yeah. Like, I mean, ultimately, you got to find somebody that's with, that's with you through the shit. With you yeah. through the shit. That is the biggest part not a lot of people can handle not a lot of people can handle the shit no and the thing is everybody has shit everybody has shit and i think a lot of people will go through at least okay not a lot of people i will say myself sometimes i will try to like mask the shit to i don't know put a more palatable version of myself out there but it's ultimately like who's gonna stick around after after that facade <laughs> yeah agreed 100 percent. who's gonna really get to know me who's who wants to get to know me who wa- this is an open-ended question who wants to get to know me <laughs> <laughs> so i think to to really wrap things up and put a bow tie on this i still want to stick with this question you go ask your partner your lifelong partner your current partner your boo thing your i just slept with them thing if you and i were to end up together with nothing not even the clothes on our backs what would happen ask yourselves that and see where your relationship leads you yeah maybe it'll lead you somewhere great maybe it'll lead you somewhere (laughs) terrible but either way you will have the answer that you were looking for originally And I think that's what's most valuable. Exactly. And I think we're just going to leave it with that. Yeah. This has been really fun. And I 
I'm glad that we've had this discussion and I would I would love to hear everybody else's thoughts too. <laughs> exactly. So have a beautiful, wonderful day. And yes, we love you all. Yeah, that's that. <laughs> Bye.